It is Trib Live Radio. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel because that is where you get to see all the goods. And as in the goods, I mean my favorite. And I'm not just saying it is because she's here. I always tell everybody that knows me when they ask, Justin, who's your favorite porn star you get to know? And I say easily, Lisa Ann. She's back. Welcome. I'm back. In the new studio first time. It's amazing. You know, it's funny. I think about not traveling as much in the future. Of course, this is a reality. Everybody calm down. Eventually, I'm going to retire and you have to allow me the chance to just be home and have, be routine with TV shows like the rest of you are. You know, those, those are the things I really dream for. And I think about the people I'll miss touching base with. I know you and I will probably connect we'll you know, through Twitter. Yeah. We'll DM. We'll do this and that. But I actually enjoy seeing you. And some people, I look at them and I go, oh, I can't can't wait till I never have to see you again, you know? <laughs> well, now that we got all of our nice stuff out of the way, all right. I told you I was going to bust your balls right when you came in here, and I didn't tell you why. Okay. So, I'm a little bit, the timing of this interview is really good and really bad, because on the bad side of it, I know you're a Dallas Cowboys fan, and I'm a Washington Redskins fan. This Monday, they play each other, so I'm a little bit salty on you on that. You're a little concerned. That's <laughs> what it is. For the first year in a while, you are a little concerned about this matchup. Well, we'll, we'll both teams always wake up to play. We'll see. I'll be sure to talk to you Monday night. And then the other thing is I'm a Washington Wizards fan. And here you are making headlines on Deadspin and TMZ, you know, going, you know, taking these freshmen out to watch the Washington Wizards lose against the New York Knicks. Well, you know, we all got to get out. Mm -hmm. And my social life always... It's always about sports. I don't know if you saw, I had field passes to uh, the yeah. Eagles Giants game a couple weeks ago. I did see so that. I feel like a game a week and I'm living like large. Like I'm living the high life. Some people like to go out and go party on the weekend. Like a game a week, amazing. Knicks games, okay, the night before I pre gamed and I watched the 30 for 30 special Garden of Eden. Did you? When the garden was Eden. It's all about MSG. Michael Rapport, who I beat this year in fantasy football in our head to head match in the Stern League, he directed it. Great thing about how they used to smoke at MSG. They used to go mm -hmm. in there and gamble. Yeah. Like it was a totally crazy like mob scene place and and now it's just there's just such an old vibe about that place and it was a great game. Mello pulled it out in the final couple seconds and uh, we get the win. All right, well, we got the recap. Let's now get to the point that everybody wants me to get to in this game. So, how, you know, how, was your, how was your night? I meet people on the road. <laughs> you know, it just happens. It's inevitable. And I choose the people that I'm going to interact with. Very so easily, I'll walk up to somebody and say, hey, here's my phone number. And if they, if they hit me up, great. If they're married and they don't, that's fine, too. Uh, but normally, the young ones are pretty free and open-minded. And I find that, like, 18 to 22 is, is just a great age for me to just be social with. They're real easygoing. I have to train them not be texting all the time, though. Yeah. The young kids today and the texting. I can't imagine being on a date with you and, and, and wanting to look at this and not I you. can't either. It's exactly what I tell them. You know <laughs> what I mean? I can't either. Go, do you want me to tweet a photo of you ignoring me and texting? That's, no. That's good. Um, but it was super fun, and we've actually known each other for a couple months. This was Notre Dame's bye week. Mm -hmm. Actually, the week before I Can met Can I ask him, how you guys met? Yeah, how did you guys meet? Can I ask? Uh, we met in a social setting uh, okay. out and about when I was on the road. Okay. Uh, the week before I met him, I met the Ohio State tight end, Jeff Howerman. Young kid comes into the club. He's so huge, right? It's an 18 up club. I think he's in his senior year. He's this tall. I'm on stage and I'm standing at the same height as him. I said, tight end? He goes, yeah. <laughs> I said, you guys won 66 tight nothing end. today. He goes, I know. He goes, I'm Jeff. And I was like, this is awesome. We did a photo and it went on dead spin everywhere else. But for some reason, because his school is at Notre Dame, which is Catholic, which is a bigger mm. deal, um, it didn't make this much of a splash. Yeah, Deadspin doesn't care when I take pictures with you. Um, well, you know that's when I when I, I I saw what I saw. I told you I saw your tweets first. I saw your response uh, talking about your age and, and and just being proud of you. And I didn't know what happened. And then I went and started googling and I found out what happened. I I did not even think about the Catholic and the religious yeah. implications because I'm not really religious. So, uh, but I, then then it set into me like, oh, I guess that's why people are getting all out of a fit. Right. It. It, it just, it's just newsworthy. I guess there's nothing else going on right now. But you know what? Jameis will do something soon and distract all this. Yeah, he will. Can I at least ask before we move on, how was the rest of the night? Was The, night the rest of the night was great. Good. We actually had a little mini vacation together, everybody. Yeah. It's okay. And uh, we had fun. Cool. Well, congratulations, young sir. <laughs> um, all right. So we have that. Obviously, you can follow uh, Lisa on Twitter at the real. 
Lisa Ann. Uh, she is a verified, as she should be. And uh, you're still doing the fantasy deal, right? You're still doing the show? Still doing fantasy. Yeah. Uh, Monday nights on Sirius 210 XM 87. It's called Lisa Ann Does Fantasy. And it's been incredible. I'm liking fantasy football so much more this year. Yeah. I'm less intimidated. I, I kind of feel take chances to make moves. I've gotten made some good choices. You know, you take a chance sometimes and get somebody on the waivers. You're like, I'm going to play this kid this week and it works out for you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's awful. I drafted Calvin Johnson in the first spot, three of my leagues, and he's pretty much been a bench warmer at best, yeah. you know? Sorry for the injury, but when you're playing fantasy, we just need your points. We need you out there mm -hmm. producing for us, you know? But it's been fun. Uh, I'm in six successful leagues. The Howard Stern League is crazy. They're voting right now on what we have to do. The loser may have to stand in Times Square for four hours wearing a message board that says horrible things. Mm. I'm going to be in New York next month. I really hope it's that. Well, actually, you guys won't be done. We won't be done in time. I will uh, back I out if I'm even up. close to last. Right? Oh, <laughs> listen to you. I'll back out. Is Howard actually, is he, is he playing the league or is it just after Nick he Brandon doesn't. under him? Will plays in his part. Okay. I say, I but it's Howard. like the whole crew, so they're all very funny people. Sure, yeah. JD's in there. Uh, our, our celebrity guest is also Michael Rappaport. He's very funny. He likes to taunt a lot. Mm -hmm. These are people that during it was my first actual war room draft, mm -hmm. and these guys were really intense, and they just talked shit. And I was like, wow, this is much different than drafting from your home on the internet. Have you ever? Yeah, it is. Have you ever? Um, actually, I think my first draft ever was a War Room draft before I even It's fun, got right? Have you ever done um, like an auction style draft? I'm going to do my first one this year. I'm yeah. reading up on yeah, the like rules. The, yeah. I did one for baseball. It's, that's, it's intimidating. It, yeah, because you got to really be, you got to be prepared. These players are going to last you mm -hmm. and, and who you're going to, it's, it's, and it's yeah. a lot of scoring system things. Yeah. It's always about the scoring system when you're playing in a different league. It, yeah. And that's true. Cause I mean, especially with, uh, you always hear whenever you talk about, especially like football and receivers as a point. You know, points per right. reception. Is it, uh, is is it, it standard? Is it PPR? Yeah. Right, right, right. Cool. Um, I wanted to ask you this, too, going into the uh, porn world. I saw you have been tweeting, and it looks good. You've been working a lot with uh, Bell Knox. Yeah, you know, Dude, Bell is... I'm not sure if you've had Bell come through here we yet. Haven't. No. no. Bell Knox is the Duke University student that last year went through some trouble at school because she started doing movies. She really started doing movies to pay for school, and she did pay for school doing this, but it was a conflict, and people made it very uncomfortable for her. And through this, she spoke. So she got to go on The View, and she wrote an incredible econ piece for Time Magazine last June that was wow. just so well written. She's a sharp kid, and I knew her PR girl, and I reached out to her, and I said, Hey, let me just. Skype with her and chat with her a bit and mentor her a bit. I want to mm. see where her head's at, how she's feeling about this. Because to think that someone only did maybe 10 movies, but everyone knows who they are already. Yeah. She couldn't even put her feet in and see if she wanted to do it and get back out. Right. It's there. That's that's what she's known for now. So over about four months, we got really close just by chatting online and texting and talking on the phone. And then I had her stay with me for three weeks over this summer. And Did we, that's, yeah, we, that's I, big because I also know you you like your privacy. Too. I like so my I'm, privacy. That's actually a pretty. And I didn't work or do anything myself. Cool. Like I directed her, yeah. but. It was all about her. Uh, we we shot during the days. We took some days off on the weekends. We did fun activities. Like I took her to my I sponsor an eight year old in sports. So I took her to his eighth birthday party. I said, "You're going to a pizza party today with kids. It's how we live a normal life, you know." <laughs> so we did every evening. We would sit down for about four hours and talk about everything from taxes to, you know, how to manage her schedule to how to manage her health and all these things. And now I see her, and every time I see her, she's so much more of a woman than she was before I met her. But we're so close, and we can crack jokes, and we just have this instant bond. So it's been incredible. Do you? Th how important is that to you? You're, you and I have touched on this in the past. We, you know, we've talked about you can't do this forever, and you obviously evolve yourself in so many other projects you do. How important is it to you, to your legacy within the the uh, porn industry, that you're not just the most famous porn star in the world. You're not just the one who did Sarah Palin. You, but but you but you're. Like the girls all look up to you, your mentor. Yeah, you know, it's this year. It's it's real. I've really realized it because doing this with Bell opened a huge conversation for other girls to come to me and say, "Hey, do you have any time to talk?" And I've yeah. realized, wow, there's such a need for it. A porn consultant. So yeah, so I did do a, a couple free seminars this summer at some of our trade shows, and I'm going to back to LA next week just for a meeting at XBiz because they're going to allow me to use an office space there to give some seminars. Wow. I gave a nice little speech this year at the expo about everybody trying to instruct the younger people of the world on how to be better mm -hmm. you know so i've realized that is a big part of how i would love to close out my career is just just getting everyone straight you know i am certainly not trying to rush you but if and i don't even know if you're going to answer this 
when is the end or when do you know it's the end? I just don't know. You know, it's so hard to predict. One thing that's pushing me, I'll be honest with you about is the HIV crisis in our business. Okay. And I don't think condoms are going to be the solution. I don't think there's any solution. I think what's happening is we're letting more people in and we have a huge issue right now. Not nothing against anyone's sexual preference. Please don't anyone judge me here, but we have a lot of guys that are doing both. Mm -hmm. They're doing boy, boy scenes and they're doing boy, girl scenes. And they also do gay privates where they're escorting and, there's a lot more germs coming in the business yeah. now. The escort than is probably a big thing because you definitely don't know who you're dealing with. No, and and we just had a, a guy that his private, so his John tested positive and had to make a list for the state of Nevada of all the people he was with. The state reached out to this kid who's in our business and then we all had to stop shooting for two weeks and each time those two weeks happen, you're sad because you're thinking, is it someone I know? We're yeah. not allowed to know who it is. Yeah, oh, okay. So it's almost like a game of Clue. We all sit on the phone, we call each other, we're on websites, we're searching things and it the neurosis, uh, I've that's kind of maybe going to be a little bit more of a judgment call of why yeah. I retire than anything. Not because I don't love it but because i just say mm, maybe my safety maybe the safety issue is too much for me to manage at this age and i just want to do something else right because you know with like relating things to sports you know when a when a great athlete or somebody is done you know they usually kind of bank it on you know one their health but also like is have they accomplished everything they want to accomplish and i can't imagine i mean you've accomplished everything there is exactly. accomplished so it's like you it's like i guess you're like the Derek jeter in a way it's you're a, just you're, you know what he had the greatest year and there were so many amazing videos mm -hmm. made of the best of Derek jeter and he did it right he left on an ultimate high note i was gonna message you and i forgot to actually when that was because i was wondering i knowing you being a big sports nut uh, i was wondering if you were gonna go to his last if you managed to get yourself to his last game i was I gonna didn't. and i'm Okay. I, gonna, been, uh, I wanted awesome. to ask you if you did. If but yeah, it's 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 great to retire on a high note. You know, Seinfeld ended on a high note, so it's gonna it's gonna go that way. But I'm just not really sure. I'm waiting for my book to be solid, and that's getting closer and closer. I'm waiting for things to happen that are gonna make changes for me. I yeah. feel like setting goals and in lines all the time can sometimes make you too rigid, and you don't go with the flow of other things. I just hope. My hope is, I mean, I want you to be happy. I just hope that you don't stop and stop doing your tours and stuff like this and me not know it and me not know what I no. last interview was with you. Everyone will know. And I'll probably still, you know, I thought about it. I still would tour, but I would like to host at clubs, you know, where yeah. I'm not, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Dancing is hard on your body. And after doing it for this many years, you know, I sit in the tub at night and I'm like, you know, my feet, my knees hurt. It'd be better if I was just standing somewhere <laughs> being pretty and being able to rest my body. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I try, but. I can only imagine what you, what, what you go through yeah. doing that. By the way, uh, obviously Lisa's going to be a blush uh, uh this weekend uh did how do you how do you like the blush it's I re love, renovating i love the new stage the, the rea the new stage and i actually danced last night and not once did i feel like i was gonna fall off <laughs> that other stage and the ceiling was so low on the other stage that you also couldn't put your hands up too high so it was like yeah freedom freedom on stage looks much better yeah and, they're, and that, I know they're still waiting to get the second floor open yeah. up. So, again, if you haven't, uh, if A, if you've never been to Blush, you need to get down there, but more so now than ever because Lisa's and Lisa Ann's there all this weekend, and they have this new beautiful setup. Uh, lots of great uh, girls and, and drinks, and the whole staff is, uh, is wonderful. Fair. So, thank you as always. Thank you for having me. I'll see everybody this weekend at Blush. Follow her on Twitter at The Real Lisa Ann. Make sure you subscribe, and uh, I guess stick it here at Triple Radio. I'm sure they got more coming up.